So every once in a while, news comes out, and I have to kind of, like, check myself and make sure I haven't been, like, secretly unconscious and performing what's going on. Because, Blake, something's happened that I'm very surprised that we are not at the helm of. It... This feels like a very, like, show mode introduction. Are we using this for the show? I'm scared. <laughs> no, what would make you say that? <laughs> but yeah, Blake, apparently there is a, uh, in England, they are start, they're opening a musical all based around Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and I'm extremely excited to, uh, to ever see The People's Rock, a musical. It is insane reading about it, and I'm extremely surprised that we have not come up with it yet. Uh, according to Met, according to Metro, the musical is set 30 years in the future and focuses on a teenage girl living in America under the leadership of Emperor Trumpus. The girl begins becomes obsessed with the idea and legend of The Rock, who is presented as a teenage fantasy slash religious role model hybrid. And The Rock will be portrayed, I'm sure you've guessed, by a puppet. It is a musical where Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a puppet god and Trump is emperor. See, Scotty, the reason that we didn't come up with this before is because this is so fucking ridiculous, even it is out of our wheelhouse. I don't know, I don't know how out of the- apparently he's also called the Fairy Rock Mother. It's Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is going up on the West End, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, this the... com it combines everything we love, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Theater, puppets, everything, Blake. It's beautiful. Well, Scotty, Dylan, you guys want to go to j just Britain, I guess, and watch the rock musical? <laughs> you want to go to Britain and smoke crack? <laughs> <laughs> oh... Welcome to Fight Boys, the weekly podcast about professional wrestling and not so professional wrestling. <laughs> Where we smoke crack cocaine. I am your host as always, Scotty Moore, joined by my tag team partner in crime, Blake Tanner. I do not have enough wine for this right now, guys. It's the plattest man on the planet, and of course, the man who I, I had a lovely pizza lunch with a couple of days ago. It is the lord of the smart side himself, the Dylan. Gotta get that saucy smart pizza. Yeah, saucy sm the saucy smart pizza. And also, I'm a big fan of the fact that at most of the time when we record this show, Blake does have an anecdote about one of the times he gets pretty drunk. When the Dylan came to us, he was just like, all right, guys, we're going to get pizza, and then we're going to go to every bar around Disney Springs and just enjoy all of it. He knew and his audience. <laughs> he knew his audience. Like, and you, by the you, will, you will notice how incredibly sober I was after all of that, though. <laughs> yeah, because you're a giant, and I'm a tiny man, and I was really drunk, and I went to see The Last Jedi, and I was very confused. I was just like, this, what the fuck is this? What's the pork? Have you even seen The Force Awakens? No, I haven't. Blake, I just needed to go sit somewhere for a while, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. There's this tall guy. Anyways, this is a pro wrestling podcast. You hurt me with everything that you know about <laughs> Star Wars. It pains me. Can we talk about wrestling? Yes, of course we can. And how it's it's like... It's such a good week because we, we we had to skip last week. We had to skip last week because I was on vacation, um, which means we didn't get to talk about the fact that WWE is kind of like an in with the good and out with the bad situation this week. Because uh, yeah, you could definitely put it that way. Yeah, we well, uh, 
Well, of course, we had the signings of Candice LeRae, which made me cry. Because Candice was like one of my favorite indie wrestlers of all time, and I'm finally proud that she's there. Yeah, she had her last match against Joey Ryan. It was beautiful and tear-jerking. You had War Machine. You had, oh god, who was the last one? Who am I forgetting? Ricochet. Oh, uh, Ricochet. That guy, that guy that like carried Lucha Underground on his back, kind of like, <laughs> yeah. bit for two seasons. Yeah, you just know. that guy. Uh, that one guy. All of that, and then we finally got rid of Enzo Amore, which Jesus Christ, that story. Like, I, I don't. Uh, this. Oh. I listen, don't know the I don't, best. Listen, I don't. I don't care how this ends up. This is not a good story. Like, like here. Here's everything you need to know. There were sexual assault allegations yesterday. Today is Tuesday. They fired Enzo Amore. It wasn't a, like, we wish him best of luck. It was a, we've released nope. Enzo Amore. We are washing our hands of him. We're going to start a new tournament for the Cruiserweight title, and then we're going to pretend that Enzo Amore wasn't a thing, which by default makes Camilla, or Camilla the most successful member of that trio, oh. which <laughs> is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, by the way, like the like the big like he did not these allegations were levied against him privately in October. Yeah. And, and th- he- because WWE did not know is why they dropped him like a fucking hot potato. Well, also because Jesus like most people because a lot of people online will pull the, yeah, but you know, it's just implications right now. There's no clear evidence. Ooh, you, I'm not going. I'm have not going you there. Seen Enzo Amore? Have you looked at this man? This little tiny creepy rat thing? No. Like the best thing that I will say is, I hope the person that did the bad thing goes to get punished. The and he will. Like, there's no way he won't at this point. Like, listen, like, I, I we are what we're saying, Scotty is Blake and I are saying that. Let's, we aren't saying that we know enough to, to say whether or not he did it, because that's the police's job, but we hope that if that does happen, he gets put in jail for a long time. And if not, we hope that whoever is in charge of all the bad things that happen does get arrested. Yeah. Yes. See, with, I just remember there being a moment a couple of weeks ago where all the big sexualist things assaults were coming out, like the stuff with Kevin Spacey, the stuff with... Uh, uh, Louis C.K., and I just remember laying back and being like, wow, it's really surprising that nothing has come out against any wrestlers. And then I just, well, like... Well, it turns out, it turns out it did before that even started back in October, so... Yeah, but they were... Yeah. Enzo was just like, let's keep this quiet, I am a champion, and I'm like, no, Enzo, you're a fucking garbage human being. Jesus. Uh, speaking of garbage human beings, Alberto Del Rio... Uh, oh, we are just sti- we're getting all the all the fucking hits this week, aren't we? Yeah, we're just doing the greatest hits of fight. If we're gonna really go into it, we need to also talk about Matt Hardy and TNA. Probably Paige needs to be in there. Uh, like, if we're gonna go all the hits, <laughs> but I just love the fact that Alberto Del Rio, and I'm almost positive Del Rio in Spanish means tail between legs because of just Jesus. How quickly he has turned on Triple H. And I mean, like, Jesus. positively towards Triple H. The man who was like, I invite that pussy to come to my restaurant and I will fight him in my restaurant. And I'm like, uh, okay. Instead of being like, I, I, I said it and I was wrong. He basically blamed all the shit he said on Paige. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it's- you mean he's kind of like... A shitty human being? Yeah. Um, like with like WWE, when they admitted their mistake the first time I left, I also admit my mistake. I personally apologize to Triple H for the issues we had when I was in a bad relationship with my ex. She and her entire family made me believe that they affected our relationship. She made me believe that the videos and all that was happening outside... To her was perpetrated by Triple H and the company. At the time, I believed her because she was my partner. I defended her by heart and sword, and then things were different. Later, I realized how wrong I was to place my trust in that person. I deeply regret my words and apologize to Triple H, his wife, and WWE. They understood me. This is the worst kind of fucking gaslighting, and I am glad that he is never stepping near that company again as long as... 
the person that I perceive Triple H to be is there to stop him. Yeah. Uh, although he did have a nice little if he would return. I wouldn't go back time, but I would transition to a special appearance wrestler. Fucking no. You are not special appearance wrestler worthy yet. As a matter of fact, the only special appearance that I would like is if his special appearance involved getting slapped by every female member of WWE. Let me put it this way. Rob Van Dam was barely a special appearance wrestler, but they still tried. Uh, surely before I retire, I will do something special with WWE. And that thing, that something special is getting a restraining order from them. Uh, let's see. In 2019, before leaving the United States, I'm definitely going to do something special with them. I consider myself to be on good terms with them right now on my side. We'll shake hands one day and everything will be fine. Time heals all wounds. Fucking what? How many, how many wrestlers in the past have pulled this fucking hat trick where they were with the company, left, then came back, and then left again, neither time on great terms, to come back a third time? I just don't see that happening with him. Yeah, especially not with him. Because now, because with me, here's the thing. When I think about Vince McMahon... I think about somebody who's just like, I appreciate someone who at least has balls and some dignity to their actions. <sighs> Alberto is going full on just like, oh no, please, let me back, I am fine. It's like you realize that your ex Spe- is still with of, the company. Uh, speaking of, of Vince McMahon, kudos to him for taking a Stone Cold stunner while literally being on death's door. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, right? De- do we want to do we want to address how much people hated Raw twenty five? Well, firstly, yeah. I want to say I love the fact that the New York crowd was so hot to see this. He was literally like, "I'm an old man. I'm I'm geriatric now. I'm, I'm I could die at any instant. If you touch me with a single finger, I will turn to powder." And the crowd is chanting for this old, old man to get beat up in the middle of the ring. That's because uh, Mr. McMahon is the greatest heel of all time. Vince could get heat if he was actually dying. He would use his death as a yeah. way to get heat he and just put tell over everybody his how fucking much product. better his coffin was going to be than their dead grandma and how she was a whore or something like that. Like yeah. He would he would bring it. He would bring it. He would, he would bring get it to the shit. point where a whole auditorium full of people would be chanting as he died. Na 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 na. Oh my Guys, I think we just figured out how Vince McMahon's going to die. Vince McMahon's like, wait, you say it's coming in 20 minutes? Put me in the ring! Please, it's going to be amazing. He would teleport Stone Cold Steve Austin to stun him to death into his grave. Yeah, but in all honesty, like going back to Raw, I didn't realize the fact that, because I didn't watch it live. I didn't realize that they filmed it in two locations. I thought they only did like the really cool Manhattan Center setup, and that was the whole. That was gonna be the whole episode. No. And then someone, yeah, oh no. no. And then someone posted a video on uh, on fa- on Twitter of people just like bullshit, Booing. bullshit. And yeah. Like, what? Why are they chanting so bullshit? The story behind that was. Because, like, they quote-unquote filmed it in two locations. The people that paid $400 for the Manhattan Center... Yeah. They basically paid $400 to watch Raw in the same room as JR and Jerry the King Lawler. Who were asleep. They were straight up asleep. Well, not only that, I actually heard that, like, there wasn't even a screen. Was Because someone told me there wasn't even a screen for them to watch Raw on, so they were just like chilling in the Manhattan Center with two old guys who people had to keep checking that no, they weren't dead. There were definitely screens. I've seen some videos. Like, they oh, watched okay. Raw. Yeah, but Raw it's just was that, on. Like, it's just that that was it. Like, they were... And then they yeah, had, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. shitty short cruiserweight matches. There was the five-minute match between Bray Wyatt and Broken Matt Hardy, nah. which, you know, hey, we're gonna, just going to blow that in five minutes in the Manhattan Center. That's good enough, right? Yeah, which, by the way, you know, Matt lost. 
And then they're yeah, gonna have, very quickly. And then they're going to have uh, mm-hmm. DX in the club, and we're going to tease that the club's going to try to beat up Geriatric Jazz. Nah, nah, we're going to give him the old too sweet rub, and then we're going to beat up the Revival, who've spent three years trying to build a fucking name for themselves, and you know, just let them hit get hit by every single DX finisher in one in like a span of thirty seconds, kill their credibility dead. We're basically trying to pull off the ascension, but three years later. Um, well, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think I, I think the revival it was fine because basically they're doing the same thing they did in NXT because the revival had them a good few years where they weren't connecting. But I, I like I honestly like the DX segment because I like the idea of like. Uh, basically, because people were like, oh, they're stealing the too sweet, they're stealing this from these people. Now they can finally be like, they fucking brought us in the ring and too sweeted us. They're fine with us using the too sweet. It's okay. The reason that I hate segments like that is because it's always the same when you have an up-and-coming big heel tag team. You always get an old tag team that should probably have no business being in the ring, and they beat them up like the new up-and-coming tag team that's in their prime are five-year-old toddlers. It's basically a bunch of old men like making themselves look good. Yeah, except it's not, because it was Gallows and Anderson in the match. It was... Ba- it was- I don't know. I think this segment... No, uh, anytime you have an old tag team, they're going to put them over the newer tag team, and that's just that's just what they did. I mean, they wrapped it up a little bit differently, but I, I just, Alice like... Alice and Anderson are not an older tag team. No, but still. I mean, I'd, I'd say they're a more popular tag team, but I wouldn't say they're more over. I, I think well, this was... A they good... also just kind of got beat up by people that shouldn't be beating them up. I don't know. Like guys, this was it was it was purely a sentimental old school segment. Like that's all. You can't it, it's kind of like I don't know, getting mad at the Transformers movies for having like not great character development. It's like no 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 no. It's not going to. It's uh it's a segment to watch shit blow up and enjoy that and then move on. Like it was not And I mean that's have. why they're not great movies, so mm. Uh, hell of a ride at Universal Studios, though. Especially when you're really drunk and you're like, yeah. That being said, oh. uh, I, I much... The main event was weirder, because the main event was just like, alright, I've brought out literally everyone on the roster in the entire world to try to hold back these three monsters. Now go. One second, watch as they... Fail miserably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. In other news, that apparently, was nice. like, 205 Live is so fucked that they were like, all right, we're going to ad- announce the new general manager for 205 Live, and we're going to announce the- what we're going to do with the championship. And what they announced was, next week, we're going to figure out what the fuck's going on. And what we're doing with the championship. And they're like, let's just hold off for another week on yep. this. I like that they have Brian doing that, who, like, is probably, when I think of some, like, them putting something off until they figure out what's going on, I immediately go to Daniel Bryan and that time where every where it was, like, three months of, will he have to relinquish the championship because he's not here? Yeah. Uh, in other news, Roman Reigns finally admitted that he did steroids, like, two years ago. Uh, so, that whole thing last week, where, like, somebody said that he was selling steroids to Roman Reigns, was that actually bullshit, or did that really, like, um... Okay, so here's the thing. If you want to go, I don't know, if you want to go, like... Based off what the guy said, the guy was like, yeah, I used to sell to Roman Reigns. Uh, what Roman Reigns says, however, I have never heard of Richard Rodriguez. Firstly, if you want to sell steroids, there may not be a better singular name than Richard Rodriguez. Um, I learned from the mistake I made nearly two years ago, and I paid the penalty for it. Since then, I have passed 11 tests as part of WWE's independent drug testing program. Well, so, all I have to say, homie, is you don't gotta know the guy to buy steroids from him. 
Uh, it, well, he also said not the company either. Like, he didn't know the company the guy sold steroids out of either. I don't know. Like, all it takes is, hey, bro, you want some good shit? You want some good shit? Uh, all right. On. Yeah, but also. Oh, no, this is crack. I thought you meant steroids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here, um, buy mm. this crack for me. Wouldn't you love that if Roman is just like, I have never bought steroids from this man? Only the richest Colombian cocaine has passed through my body thanks to this man, and that's it. And this man has something that they call Blue Georgia Kush. <laughs> oh. He's got that good Blue Georgia Kush. Um, also, I don't know how I feel about the mixed match challenge right now. Because, like, I feel weird about the fact that it's literally one match a week. And so, therefore, we could have probably the longest prediction series of all time on it. So, you mean, we get to stretch that out over the next six months? Yes, we can just stretch out one singular tournament for, like, six months. Also, we've not done this yet, but I do want to know who you guys' picks are. I have already forgotten who is in the tournament right now, so... Well, Carmella and Big E have already been taken out, and then... Oh, they had oh, such good vignettes. Yep. And then Shinsuke wait, who, and who uh, beat, Natalia wait, have beat, been taken out. Who beat uh, Big E and Carmella? Uh, Miz and Asuka. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, oh. My money's yeah, on yeah. Braun Strowman and Alexa. Okay, thank you. You, mm -hmm. uh, Dylan and I are on the same level. I also have Braun and Alexa. I mean, like, any time that they put Braun in anything, it's just going to be Braun. Plus, you've got the most protected women's wrestler on the roster. Oh, speaking... I don't know, Miz and Asuka. That's speaking true. Which, when, uh, when, when, are we, but, when are we going to do the Royal Rumble predictions? Because I am so ready for this. Oh, we're definitely doing it in the next segment, Dylan. Right after I talk about Patreon.com. Wait, no. <laughs> right after I talk about Merch Shilly McShillerson your... and the Shilling Shills. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Merch.aloadofyourbs.com is the only website where you can get your official BS and Fight Boys merchandise. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Get your official shirts for the Fight Boys. Get you shirts for your favorite JWF wrestlers, whether that be Scotty Moore, Blake Tanner, the tag team known as Eye to Eye, the Dylan. We got shirts for all of your favorites over at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. But guys, before we get into that, it is of course time for the new weekly segment. I'm now making it a weekly segment of Dustwatch 2018. Okay. <laughs> Is that the is that the intro music? What? Is that is that our um, intro theme to this new segment within this podcast? Yeah. Just... <laughs> um. So yeah, we need to compose a tweet to Chuck Taylor in order to get him to follow us. Now, here's the thing. Uh, since since I'm going to ROH in a couple of weeks, I figure I could bring him a Dustwatch shirt. So let's tease that today and basically just say, Yo, dog, what's your shirt size? Let me get you one of these bad boys. <laughs> so, so we can go with like a, a hey, at sexy Chucky T, what's your shirt size? Gonna get you a present before hashtag ROH Atlanta. I wish I was doing this on my phone because I really want to add the kissy face emoji, but the three hearts will work. Hashtag Dustwatch2018. Hashtag please follow us. Uh, does that sound right, guys? Yeah, I think you're good. Do, uh, does it need any more emojis? I can add emojis. No, 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 I think mm -hmm. you're good. Oh, I can also add... Okay. All right, Lynn, we will... Wait, what? I can add a second tweet? <clears throat> oh, that's weird. What? Yeah, apparently... Oh, okay, the, I can make a thread. A full thread of uh, tweets to Chuck Taylor, but that's not what we're going to go with today. I think we're just going to go with, Hey, sexy Chucky T, what's your shirt size? Get you a present for hashtag ROA Atlanta. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're about to do the prediction series, right? For Royal right. Rumble. 
And I just, I decided to check, since we did this a few weeks ago, we went to see, like, what everyone's odds were, like, in the Rumble match itself. Yeah. And it has changed quite a little bit. Yep. Uh, well, here's the thing. Uh, I, me and Dylan talked about this, and we came up with a kind of fun way to do our predictions. Because we always usually try to pick three people, right? Yeah. For the Royal Rumble, because, I mean, it's really hard to just pick one of 30. Uh, and so we like the idea that you pick one from Raw, one from SmackDown, and then one surprise entrant that might suddenly enter and win it. Okay. But we're going to wait to get to that, because first we need to talk about the Usos versus Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin in a two out of three falls match. I think this is going to be it. I think this is going to be the crowning moment. How, this is... Uh, uh, <clears throat> this does feel like the culmination of, like, kind of this rivalry. Yeah. But then that leaves me... Who do you think their main opponents are going to be? Because I also think that um, Gable and... Uh, Shelton are gonna win it this time. I think they're not gonna win it. And I then mean, Oosus, the Ooses are gonna have to face the Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, the Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, yeah, I could see that. All right, uh, I'm I'm on Gable and Benjamin getting it though. All right, keeping in the tag team division though, Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan, also known as Team Y, uh, take on the Bar of Cesaro and Shamu. I think this is when um I think this is when the bar finally rises above. They're gonna they're gonna sell the story of, you know, Jordan and Seth, that's not Dean, guys. Guys, that's not what tag team champions should be. <laughs> um Oh man. My only thing is like I d I don't know. I don't want it to swap around okay, I'm gonna keep it on Seth and Jason. I don't I want. Also, I don't want to. I will also do that because I, but I, I don't feel like they're going to hot potato the tag titles back and forth to Seamus and Cesaro because they were tag champions what, like four times last year, three times. Yeah. yeah. Like I feel like just a few doing times. this takes away from it because I feel like it has to be. It has to be somebody else that takes it off of them. I can see um, that. Yeah, uh, actually, especially no. with the reintroduction of the blackout, the curb oh, yeah. stomp, my baby boy. Your baby. Um, yeah, I could see that. Not only that, like, they have the perfect people to drop it to in the Balor yeah. Club. Like, that's perfect. Um, AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in a handicap match for the WWE Championship. And as much as I would love... To be able to say Sami Zayn is WWE <laughs> champion. That's not going to happen this time. It's not going to happen this time because this is basically the penultimate. The odds are stacked against AJ Styles kind of match, meaning that AJ Styles is going to win. Now, my big question about this is, is this going to fuel the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, like, break up? I, it doesn't have to necessarily happen at the Rumble, but is this what's going to lead into their eventual Mania match? Oh, shit. No, I take, I take it I back. The Usos have to hold on to the title because Sammy and... Oh, are they going to turn them face? Shit, maybe it is going to be Gable and Jordan. Or Gable and uh, and Benjamin. Actually, no, I'm going to reverse yeah. that. It's going to be Gable and Benjamin, and then Sammy and Owens are going to lose because Shane McMahon's going to interfere, and it's going to lead to a double turn where the face that runs the place has to be taken down by Nakamura, who can't be the heel in this fight, and then they become the face tag team for Mania so they can be tag champions, because fuck else are they doing. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. All right. And then, of course, we have Brock versus Braun versus Kane. Brock pins Kane. Yeah, Bro yeah, yeah. Brock. Bro Brock and Braun... They're not going to do that again? Um, they should. Or they not, should you know. put it on Braun and then just have Braun win at Mania and just be like, look, we have a true monster, but they're not going to. They're going to waste all his potential again. I don't know what the fuck he's going to do for Mania if he doesn't win this. He's got to get yeah. these hands. Like, there's no one left for him to fight. He's, he's going to... No. 
He's going to get those yams, man. Get them yams. Smash these hams. Uh, yeah, Brock. I got Brock. You got you got Brock, Blake? Yeah. yeah. Bork Laser. Bork Laser <laughs> is number one. All right, the Women's Royal Rumble. Remember, you get a Raw, you get a SmackDown, and then you get a Rando. Rando third. All right, who wants to go first? A Rando... A rando, a rando Calrissian. Uh, I have no okay, idea. Okay, so, Raw Jesus. is Asuka, uh, SmackDown is Becky, unnamed is Ronda Rousey. Oh, fuck you. Those are really good. You can uh, jump on I my bandwagon. I was going Asuka for Raw as well. I, I, but... I spread those odds. I do feel, I do feel that uh, Charlotte versus Becky is the SmackDown WrestleMania match, though. Yeah, that's like, a like, really Ra- good one like, too. Like Sammy and Kevin recruit Becky for the Yep movement, and then becomes like a trio, and then she just like does become basically she like like it becomes a who can out Nature Boy the other one at at Mania between Becky and uh, and Charlotte, which would be a refreshing take on that rivalry. Mm-hmm. With okay. that being said, I'm going to pick Oscar Charlotte. And fuck it, brother, brother, Beth Phoenix. Isn't Charlotte the champion? I think she's still in the match. Is she still the champion? Wait, is she in the match too? I have no idea. I don't know how this works. I thought she was in the match. No. But then again, that might have been before she won. Oh, fuck. Um, Alright, I'm going to change it to Naomi then. Okay. <sighs> Damn it. I wa- Okay. Clearly, Oscar's my raw pick, but I really love the idea of Nia Jax winning it. Because I like that idea of Nia Jax winning it and then going on to face uh, Bliss. Like, that's that's something they could build up really mm-hmm. well. Um, I'm going to go Oscar, Becky, uh, not Ronda Rousey. Fuck it, AJ Lee. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, okay. I'm down. I'm down with men's. that. Men's. I want to go first for the men's because I've got I've got this down. I know exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Because I, I also want to take this surprise before anybody else gets it. Uh huh. Um. So for SmackDown, I need to meet some sh- Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh huh. Um. Raw. Ramen. Rins. Ramen Rins. Ramen Rins. And for the surprise. Daniel Bryan. Okay. So it was the exact same thing that, Raw Finn that, that, that Scotty and I had. Okay, good. I'm glad we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Raw, Finn Balor, SmackDown. Uh, I need a different one for my SmackDown. Because cause the guy who, I'm, who I want, my other guy, is technically a surprise, but he would also be SmackDown, and that's Dolph Ziggler. Oh, now, yeah. Fuck it. Uh, Finn Balor, Rusev, Dolph Ziggler. Okay. Here, I'll... I'll, I'll... Oh, I would love any yeah, of those. Yeah, uh, I, I have Roman, Ramen, uh, Nakamura, and then... I guess it's... In, like I know Debry will show up, and it'll be like a huge moment. I'm real happy for that. But uh, I, I will go with the only less probable person than Daniel Bryan that's punk. Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ. How All right. My other my other surprise I was thinking would be Christian just because I want to see He Christian is not again. medically cleared to be in a ring ever again. Yeah, Christian well, look, is like full on retired. It's okay. Listen, he can come out but only it's if okay. he uses his original singles music and there's like the sparkle sparklers that like fall from the 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 top of the Titan Tron, you know the. Oh, Christian! Be lovely. Christian! Christian! Yeah, that, that has to be that no, music. It would be. I don't know why they ever got rid of it. Vamp for a little be, bit. I need some more wine. It'd be at last you've been cleared. Damn, we kind of burned through that. I forget how like few matches there are for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, because there's no U.S. title match, right? Bobby Roo no, they're wasn't what... defending the title. Uh, yeah, no. Miz won the IC you know, title. No, Bobby's just like, I got the belt. 
Miz won the IC. T- God, that made me happy. So, but that's what makes me feel that Ro- Roman's got a good chance at, at winning. Because he, he dropped the IC title. He's like, I'm going to bigger and better things. Ooh-ah. Yeah. Let me actually look at the new betting odds that Blake was looking at for the Royal Rumble since uh, since we haven't checked those out since last time. Let's see. Somebody tell me what the odds are on Punk. Uh, I want to place a dollar bet. You place a dollar bet on that. Um, hold so on, you mean see. you get ten million fucking dollars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want you to know. I want you to know. I'll donate five thousand. Five thousand of those dollars to the young bucks out of spite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going all in in sept- uh, in the fall. Also, Blake, uh, Scotty, I wanted to ask: are, are you all in? Oh, I'm all in. Are you all in, Scott? BS is all yeah, in. B- BS is all in. Okay, good. We. We have to get our uh, financials together to travel to a major metropolitan area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shinsuke. What? Shinsuke's actually. <laughs> What's pretty... going on? What are we doing? Blake, we're all in. It's okay. Just accept it. Oh um, no. Shinsuke is even. Roman is five to two. Daniel Bryan's nine to two, and tied with Hello? Dolph. Braun and Finn are seven to one, which yeah. is where Cena is now. Hold on, let me see. Where's yeah. Barack? Yeah, Barack Obama is still a thousand to one, so yep. that's good. See, that being said, like I just like there's no. This is one of those years where it's like I'm definitely sure that Cena is not in the picture enough to like come in and do it. Yeah, which by the way, uh, Dylan CM Punk is eighty to one, which is the same as Kofi Kingston and Aleister Black. For God, re- that means a lot of fucking people have faith. For some p- reason, Carl Anderson is 80 to 1, but Luke Gallows is 66 to 1. So good brother fucking got it, big man! EC3 is up to 50 to 1. Jake the Snake Roberts is 100 to 1. Which, by the way, did you see who's playing Jake the Snake Roberts in the Page movie? Because it's kind of buck wild. No... I didn't know that Jake the Snake Roberts was in the Page movie. I'm concerned at who, like, what his presence is in the Page movie. But he is in it being played by Vincent Vaughn. He's just like, hey, what's up? It's me, Jake the Snake Roberts. How you doing? Scotty, let me stop (laughs) you right there. Because when you started that sentence with the word Vincent... I thought you were going with Vincent Kennedy McMahon. I'm Jake the Snake Roberts. Bobby Roode's 20 to 1. Seth is 20 to 1. John Cena, 7 to 1. Sami Zayn's 20 to 1. Where's Kevin? A lot of people got faith. Huh? Kevin, yeah. where's Kevin at? Chris Jericho. Oh, Kevin? Kevin's at 20 to 1. Finn, Finn. Chris Jericho, EC3, and Matt Hardy are all 50 to 1. Is, is Finn at... Above or below ten to one. Uh, Finn's seven to one. He's the same as John. Yeah. Oh Jesus! This is. Uh, I just love that Donald Trump is seven hundred and fifty to one. Vin Diesel's two fifty to one. The released James Ellsworth is two hundred to one. I mean, I. <laughs> I think that you can see, uh, get a little bit of a glimpse into the mind of. These betting odds when you see the things like that. Where where's where's Cassius Ono? Because I feel like Cassius Ono is the NXT guy to show up. Cassius Ono, I, I saw him earlier. Hold on, let me see. He's a he's a hundred and fifty to one, the same as Jimmy Uso and Titus Very O'Neil nice. and John Morrison. I, see, the thing is, I really want, like, I really want him to get called up because he's doing nothing in NXT. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Other than hugging freight train, Scott Dawson's a hundred to one. Which, by the way, Blake, did you know there's someone running for governor named Scott Dawson? And I always freak out a little bit when I see his name. <laughs> governor of Alabama? Yeah, the governor of Alabama is going to be Scott Dawson. You should ask him if he if he's oh, if, he, if he's about no. Ask him if he's about no flips, just fists. <laughs> yeah. Scotty? Yeah. On BS this week, we are going down the rabbit hole of Scott Dawson because I have just 
done a cursory look of what Scott Dawson has done in his life. Yeah. And it is going to be wild. Oh my god. <laughs> when you go to the polls this Tuesday, say yeah! Yeah! All day, all night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. That's, uh... And you know what else you guys should say yeah to? You should say yeah to patreon.com slash fightboys. That's right, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, you got the right plug. Yeah, that's right. Patreon.com slash fightboys is the only website where you can go to support these good fightboys right here. And, of course, we do have perks for you all relating to that amazing, fantastic, the greatest professional wrestling organization in the world in Birmingham, Alabama, the J. WF for just $1 a month, ladies and gentlemen, $1 a month, and you will be brought into the JWF. We will say your name, give you a character, and then promptly job you out. But if you want more than that, if you want to be like Guy Fieri, like Scott Moore, like the greats, if you want to be a JWF mid-carter, then donate $5 over at Patreon. But of course, if you want that gold, if you want that gold around your waist, ladies and gentlemen, then $30 over at patreon.com slash fightboys will give you that gold. We don't know how, we don't know when, we don't know in what way, but you will become a champion if you donate $30 over at patreon.com slash fightboys, which means, guys, it's now hey, time. Hey, really quickly, I just had an idea. Yeah. Can we just have our own Patreon division? Oh, yeah. That's definitely an idea. It's just a matter of, like... It would be one guy right now, <laughs> and it'd be really weird. Because he's also the tag team champion. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right, ladies and gentlemen. Which brings us on to the JWF. And, of course, that means, boys, we got to take a break because we're going to kick it over to everyone's favorite JWF commentator, Silver Spoon, and, of course, Captain Tibbs for another episode. That's right. You get out of here, you little bitches. Go on. This is my room now. I paid for it. Captain Tibbs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to JWF War. I am Silver Spoon, joined as always by Captain Tibbs. And Captain Tibbs, we are just a few days away. A few days away, my friend, from a rumble. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Regal Rumble this Sunday is coming up, and it is an absolutely fantastic show, Tibbs. And it's going to be royal. It's going to be regal. It's going to be randy. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, we got some amazing matches on there. We, of course, have the Regal Rumble match where 20 men enter the ring. And they are going to fight to determine who is going to main event Wrestle Palooza against our JWF champion. But, of course, in order to find out who that champion is, our champion, Blake Tanner, is going to have to take on a force in the form of the Dillon. An absolutely amazing match. Of course, last week you had the groundbreaking announcement banning the Dillon's uh, finishing move, the Upper Dicker, from uh, active competition. And then, of course, in addition to that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a tag team match where the tag team champions of Scotty Moore and Scott Moore, the tag team of Eye to Eye, are going to take on the Brunch Boys, the tag team of Guy Fieri and Brunch Boy Baron Corbin. Now, Tibbs, who have you got in that match? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you, Tibbs. Very good. You know good. who Tibbs? Tibbs has got everybody. Because <laughs> Tibbs has got everybody in his pockets. He's Tibbs. That's, that's right. Tibbs. Yeah. But, of course, last week we had, did uh, get to see those two men not against each other, but next to each other in the ring. As uh, Eye to Eye and the Brunch Boys took on the tag team of the Br Rat Sension. Uh, of course, Rat Boy Connor and Victor, and of course, Bananas in Pajamas, uh, a hot new tag team. And of course, at the end of that match, we saw we saw a little bit of drama happen as the tag champs took out their tag partners, the Brunch Boys, with a quick SMG and a power bomb, some vicious moves. And of course, I, uh, eye to eye, I've left a bad taste in the mouth of the Brunch Boys, I'd say. And the Brunch Boys are in the ring right now to respond to Eye to Eye's action. Let's have a listen. <clears throat> you know, last week, we thought we had a great opportunity. We had an opportunity to stand in this ring with one of our favorite tag teams in the world, Eye to Eye. We got to stand beside them ahead of our match at the Regal Rumble, and we got to see how those champions work in the ring. 
And it turns out that they only work for themselves. Because when the going got tough, they only tagged in each other. They were selfish. They hogged the spotlight. They didn't care about the brunch boys. And they damn sure didn't care to, about us after I had to tag myself in. They left us to face four other men, and did we fail? No. We came out victorious. We came out looking like champions. And what did the actual champions do? They waited in the wings and then attacked us like cowards. They put us down and left us. Oh, well, Tibbs, looks like here are a couple of men who are not, not enjoying what the Brunch Boys have to say. That is eye to eye, our tag champs. Yeah, conflict. I'm sorry, left you what, Baron? Uh, left, left you what? Left you laying? Left you beaten? Left you broken? Is that what you were going to say? Because you know it's true. You talk about how much you dominated those four other guys in that ring, but just one SMG from me left you motionless. Left you laying on the mat, and that's exactly what's going to happen to you at the Regal Rumble because you said you wanted to see how a champion works in that ring. Well, we showed you how champions work. We work together. We dominate together. And if someone disrespects us, then we take them out together. And you disrespected us last week by tagging yourself in. And you're disrespecting us this week by standing in that ring and daring to call yourself future champions. So I don't care. Oh my God, Tibbs. Looks like a couple more men are joining the fray here. The Rat Sension have entered the ring, jumping eye to eye from behind. And, oh, looks like Bananas in Pajamas are joining them, beginning to take the fight to the Brunch Boys. It is chaos in the ring, ladies and gentlemen. Baron grabbing Johnny Bananas, tossing him over the top rope. Looks like a mini Regal Rumble ahead of this Sunday's pay-per-view. And the Rat Sension, meanwhile, ganging up on Baron Corbin, top it. Tossing him over the top rope, but it looks like Guy Fieri, ooh! Guy Fieri with a big double clothesline, taking both of these men over the top rope. Meanwhile, it looks like Scott Moore has actually picked up Joey Pajamas in a powerbomb grip, tossing him into that pile of humanity outside. An impressive show from Scott Moore, Tibbs. It looks like Eye to Eye are actually celebrating inside of that ring, but ooh, Fieri attacking them both, but quickly Scott Moore grabs Guy, tosses him over the top rope, and Scotty, ooh, nails him with a big Scotty kick, sending him flying to the outside. Let me tell you something, I think these two men are showing they're going to dominate in that Regal Rumble, but wait! Oh my God, Scott Moore grabbing his own son, tossing him over that top rope, eliminate him out of the ring. Scott Moore picking up the JWF tag titles, holding them high. Well, Tibbs, let me tell you something. If I had to predict that Regal Rumble pay-per-view, I think Scott Moore just made a devastating showing right now. And I will tell you something, Sills. Scott Moore, Scott Moore, he is the epitome of what a good father is. He's showing his kids where they should be. I should take some tips from him. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, but of course, in that Regal Rumble pay-per-view, it's all to find out who's going to go on to Wrestle Palooza, the biggest show of the year, to take on the JWF champion. But of course, we don't know who that could be. It could be Blake Tanner, or of course, it could be the Dylan. But of course, Captain Tibbs, you know, last week you came out to this ring and announced that all of Dylan's dick-based offense, his most vicious moves, the upper dicker, the sick dick kick, all of them have been banned and of course uh, they're all very illegal honestly uh I, we could have probably gotten sued at any point that's right and of course uh dylan uh didn't seem happy last week so we were gonna send one of our top interviewers honeypot to go speak to him but of course uh tibbs i don't know i, I heard you tried to talk to him about it but he did not have want anything to do with the dylan he got very quiet, then he started mumbling things about rage and anger, and then he kind of walked away. He started twitching. Yeah, so in lieu of a honeypot, I have actually taken it upon myself to interview the Dylan. I actually interviewed him earlier today. Let's have a listen. So, Dylan, last week you certainly had a rude awakening, didn't you? Captain Tibbs came out, declared that the upper dickers, the sick dick kicks, some of your most devastating moves, well, they're banned. Now, while I do agree that these moves were definitely over the line, 
It almost seems unfair to take away these signature moves from you. I mean, just just days away from your match at the Regal Rumble. I mean, what do you think? You realize all those moves were a joke, right? Like, like when I first got here, I didn't know as much about wrestling. Figured I'd throw a low blow in there just because, you know, to even things up. Uh, didn't notice the ref was looking. Thought I was going to get disqualified. Didn't. Won the match. Found out later Tibbs didn't even know the rules to how to wrestle. Uh, and I've just kind of been exploiting that for the last, what was going on, like eight months now? It's really impressive. See, in the meantime, though, I learned how to wrestle better. I know what to do. I just kept doing it because it was kind of a statement against how stupid this place is that they just let me continue to do that as a legitimate finish. So now it's going to be worse for everyone involved. See, you know, the low blow is bad. You can get over it. I normally do it because it stuns the person, leaves them, you know, kind of momentarily dazed. You get the, the quick quick finish. No real pain required. That person's able to go about their day a couple hours later after some ice and the slightly higher uh, octave range. But now I'm going to have to start putting people in hospitals. Going to have to start hitting people in the head instead of the dick and... Now Tibbs is going to have to bear responsibility for that, you know, when bodies start piling up, locker room starts thinning out. But it was his choice. We, we, you know, I tried to do this the fun way, the easy way, but well, now it looks like I'm going to have to do it the way that leaves everybody a little less than what they were before. And now that goes for uh, Mr. Not Actually an Underdog, but Still an Underdog, Blake, Blake Tanner. But we'll see how it all works out. I mean, you know, God know, God only knows what uh, what I'll come up with now. I mean, you know, I I got some sick ideas in my head. You might pick up on that from uh, the number of ways I beat the shit out of that sissy honeypot. But we'll see what I can come up with for Blake. Should be a good time. <laughs> see you around, Zills. Alright, well, Captain Tibbs, what do you think of what the Dylan has to say there? It looks like the Dylan's uh, calling you a fool almost for letting him get away with this for so many years. What do you think? Yep. I, I cannot say in good conscience that he is wrong. It was probably something I should have done as a wrestling promoter, but still that Dylan's an asshole. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of assholes, Tibbs, let's talk about one... That uh, you actually unfortunately have to call son, and that is Canada Charlie, the man. Hey, now I'm the only one that can call my son an asshole. Now let's talk about that asshole. <laughs> All right, of course. A couple of weeks ago, Canada Charlie won a mini rumble to, of course, win the second win. Something you came up with, an opportunity to re-enter the rumble match after he had been eliminated. Now, of course, knowing Canada Charlie. We knew he was going to get eliminated, so it's always good for him to have a second wind, if you'd say. What do you think, Tibbs? Honestly, uh, I was I was banking on somebody somebody horrible that actually needed needed two times uh, in the match itself to get eliminated, so we get to have the fun times of watching somebody that's terrible get eliminated twice. I, I in no universe, actually thought that it would be my own son that got it, but I am. Not surprised in the slightest now anymore. I am very sorry and I apologize to our viewers. That's right, Captain Tibbs. And of course, Canada Charlie. That's gotten him a little bit of an ego, a little bit of arrogance ahead of the match. And he's in the ring right now. Let's hear what he's got to say. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right. Yeah, calm down. I know, I know you love to see me. Uh, but I got to tell you something right now, okay? Charlie here is about to do something that he's not a really big fan of, you see. Charlie's getting mad. He's getting real upset. You know, Charlie, Charlie's gonna have to... Oh boy, oh jeez, oh my gosh, Charlie's gonna have to swear a little bit, so please bear, pl bear with me while, while we go through this together, okay? Now, I'm sorry... But I don't care how many of these freaking JWF legends come back. I'm really sorry, really sorry about that. I don't care how many freaking JWF superstars debut at this thing. You should all know that I am the whole 
freaking show! I'm sorry, I'm really, really sorry about that, but I am! You guys are all caring so much about these other super duper superstars that you're ignoring. A man that's gonna really, really win it all. A man that can truly go the distance and win just the whole darn thing. I am the man with the second win, you see. I am Canada freaking Charlie, and I am a winner. I'm going to go in this Sunday, and I am going to show you that I am the best of the best, and it doesn't matter who debuts, I'm better than them. It doesn't matter which one of these old freaking men in the locker room step up, because I'm better than them, and it doesn't matter who returns after a long hiatus or however long it's been, because I am... Uh -oh. oh my! Oh my God! Is that? Oh my God! C Captain Tibbs, it's him! It's Mamawa Curry. Does anybody else here uh, hear Canada Charlie admit he's a wiener? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you saying something? Because I was just chillaxing backstage when I heard some maple syrup sipping motherfucker come out and say that he was better than me. That he was better than Spider Lockhart. That he was the best damn thing on the planet. Well, Bucko, let's chat for a minute. Because I heard that you have a little thing known as the second wind. You get to jump back into the rumble whenever you want for a second try. And that's funny to me. Because that implies that, that you know that you're definitely getting eliminated. Which means that you absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, know that you suck beyond all recognition. But I've got some news for you, Charlie boy. Because when you use that second wind, and you re-enter the Regal Rumble this Sunday, you're going to get eliminated again. And you're going to get eliminated by the god of the sea, the god of law, and the god of the JWF itself, Momoa Curry. Because I'm back, baby, and back to win the Regal Rumble. Oh my god, Tibbs! Yes! Momoa Curry! But yes! Mike Curry is back, and he is back to join the Regal Rumble match tips. This is absolutely phenomenal news. What do you think? Oh, I love him. He's my best friend in the world, and he didn't insult the mother of my son, so that's always a plus. That's fantastic, Tibbs, and who knows, this may, this may shift the landscape this Sunday. Of course, with Momoa Curry in the match now, we have an absolutely... Huge change there. And then, of course, we get to see the Dylan take on Blake Tanner. We get to see eye to eye defend their JWF tag team titles against the Brunch Boys. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic pay per view this Sunday, known as the Regal Rumble. And the only way to watch it, ladies and gentlemen, is, of course, online on the official BS Network YouTube channel. Tibbs, are you excited? More than ever, this is going to be the greatest. Regal Wrestle, Regal Rumble, Regal Royal, Royalty Royal. That's ever going to happen. That's right, Tibbs. But of course, the only way to find that is online, and the only way to find out what happens next is to tune in next time on JWF Monday Night War. Back to the fight, boys. Well, guys, that was a good episode of JWF, I'd say there. Good episode all around. Blake, what did you learn this week? I learned that the only thing that Roman Reigns buys from his gym dude is the finest Colombian cocaine and the greatest blue Georgia Kush. Uh, okay, of course. And Dylan, what did you learn uh, this week? I learned that uh, Canada Charlie's a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that uh, the best rock is a puppet rock. Now, uh, uh, Dylan can be found on Twitter at SexyChuckyT. Blake, where can they find you? You can find me at Blake A. Tanner on the Twitter. I'm pretty sure I've gone at least three months without updating it now, so look for it. 
And um, you can find me on the BS Network doing a lot of other wonderful BS-related stuff. That's right. And you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. That's S-C-O-T-T-Y-E-M-O. Make sure to buy all my books off Amazon. There's Queasel Corp, Queasel Corp Risen, BS vs. the Gods, all of those amazing books that can be purchased. And, of course, you can get them on Audible as well. Uh, I think I've got Queasel Corp out right now. Queasel Corp Risen should be coming out in the next month. And I just started work on the BS vs. the Gods audiobook. So make sure to check all that out, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to find this and all the other amazing BS Network products like a load of BS, like Opposite Attractions, all online at a load of pure BS. Dot com. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube or listening on Stitcher or iTunes, rate, subscribe, leave a comment, do all of that fantastic stuff for us, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, you can find us at a load of pure BS.com. Pick up our merch at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Donate to the Patreon. Find us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. And you can find all of us on Twitter at Fight Boy Show. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life!